If my voice sounds a little creaky at this neurological thing, it's I haven't been drinking or anything. But um, this is from my novel Selfish and Perverse, and the three main characters are Nelson, the narrator, Roy, who's a salmon fisherman, and Dylan, who's a sex addict actor. <laughs> The office was on the second floor, and as I headed toward the stairs, Roy suggested that we take the elevator. It sounded odd, because I already thought of Roy as a rugged type, a throwback to the frontier, when men didn't need to exercise, because in the course of a busy day, they bonded up gangplanks, forded rivers, and climbed stairs. <laughs> After the doors closed, Roy flicked a switch to stop the elevator, grabbed my shoulders, and kissed me. I was surprised, but tried to act cool and respond with a calm ardor, as if I'd been expecting this kiss for days. I wanted him to think I was a sexy stud and kiss handsome men in elevators all the time, although my beating heart sounded like it was trying to tell him otherwise. My first rational thought was a feeling of elation that I hadn't misinterpreted the signals that he liked me. Our kiss was passionate, a long-term commitment of more than 10 minutes, a sign that he wanted to get to know me better and was beginning the process by exploring the inside of my mouth. My second thought was a feeling of relief that Roy was a good kisser. Kissing a man seemed to tell me everything I needed to know about him. Roy was gentle, passionate, strong, loving, playful, and brushed and flossed regularly. <laughs> <laughs> my third thought was the my third thought was the crotch tingling realization that we were going to have sex because I discovered that most of the time, at least with gay men, if you make it to first base, you score. <laughs> The taste is slightly salty, as if working as a fisherman had imbued him with brine. His beard was rougher than it appeared, and I enjoyed the sensation. I, and I enjoyed the sensation that my head was a match being struck repeatedly against his face. I briefly wondered whether my breath smelled bad, but I could still taste an extra strong breath mint from a half an hour ago. <laughs> my worries faded the longer we kissed. It never failed to astound me that someone whom I didn't know, and who didn't know me, could make me so happy merely by pressing his lips against mine. All right, so now they're in Alaska and they're having a, they're, they're gonna, they're having a sauna. <laughs> it's fucking hot, Dylan. <laughs> I don't think that would get a laugh. Right? <laughs> it's fucking hot, Dylan declared as he sat down next to me. Let's get it up to 180, Roy said, dipping a coffee can ladle into a barrel of water. He doused the rocks piled around the stove, causing a hissing cloud of steam to rise into the air. You trying to cook my meat, Dylan? Yes. <laughs> it has to be thoroughly cooked to kill any germs, where I said. <laughs> Sounds like you're going to eat me. You're on the menu, I asked. I said, while glancing furtively at Dylan's dick before the additional steam obscured the view. Checking out another man's penis was similar to observing a celebrity in a restaurant. It was all like it was all right to look, but to be caught staring was uncool. <laughs> Dylan stare me Dylan stare me didn't have any more charisma in their voice of mine. But then again, most penises are like actors. When they're not performing, it's hard to believe they possess any talent. <laughs> squeezed my leg affectionately as I took another sip of beer. Since I was seated between two handsome naked men, one of whom had touched me, one of whom had, who had touched me, t 
touched me twice, it was reasonable to consider man a man action. Other men talked about sex in steam rooms with panting lust, but the fierce heat obliterated every desire of mine except for my longing to escape. In Sonas, the last thing I wanted to do was to have sex. If Dylan and Roy became aroused, I would have asked them to fan me with their stiff cocks <laughs> before asking them to do anything else. Have either of you had a threesome, Dylan asked? I'd, I'd, I'd been expecting them to bring up the threesome again. Sure, Roy said, I haven't admitted as a trickle of sweat rolled down my back. It felt like my body kept some perspiration in reserve for purely social occasions. <laughs> no, I'm kidding, Dylan said, sounding as the, as the natural progression for all men was sex with yourself, sex with another person, then sex with two people, and so on. <laughs> By his reckoning, a man who fucked a thousand individuals but never slept with two people at the same time could still be considered a virgin. <laughs> I was asked once, I said, recalling an incident back in a bar in Milwaukee, but one guy was a hottie and one guy was a naughty. Uh, oh yeah, Dylan said knowingly, the hottie and the naughty. <laughs> I'd be afraid I'd have, I'd have to keep the conversation going in with threesome, I said, feeling lightheaded from the beer and the heat. I proceeded to demonstrate, Fred, you're an architect? Well, Bob here's from Chicago. And he works in a building designed by Louis Sullivan. Dylan, baby, Dylan said as he patted my knee again, if you have time to talk, then you've never had good sex. Dylan's had good sex, were I argued. The whole idea of being as in a threesome seems overwhelming, I said. I can't imagine deliberately choosing to be in a relationship where it would be even more difficult to pick a restaurant or decide which one <laughs> to Life could be easier in a threesome till an offer. Maybe you wouldn't have to make any decisions. You might find yourself with two big studs telling you what to do. <laughs> Dylan began to speak in a dumb luck Brooklyn accent. You'll eat, eat, the open food, eat the open food and watch Jim Carrey's when Jim Carrey movies when we say so, motherfucker. <laughs> That night, Roy and Dylan made me wonder why having two lovers had never become a middle-class convention in, in American life. Like owning two cars or two, or two telephones. They blew me like an Olympic relay team, passing my dick bath and dick back and forth like a baton. Roy's mouth was on my dick, pushing me towards the finish line when Dylan made his move. Kiss me hard, let my hands roam his shoulders, the scent of him shooting me over the edge, snatching Roy's victory away, away by a nose. <laughs> Afterwards, Roy ran downstairs to take a leap, while Dylan rolled over and lightly, lightly ran his finger down my abdomen, tracing the t trail of hair between my navel and groin. Do you think you could go again? He asked softly. He propped himself on his elbow to explain his muscular torso. His body hair was a built-in negligee. Fitting him perfectly, revealing and concealing the hard flesh underneath. Could you fuck me right now? He said playfully. I'm not sure, I said as his hand toyed with my stiffening cock. This is our getting to blow you sex, he said. Next time when it's just the two of us, we're gonna fuck. I reached out tentatively to touch his chest and decided that the combination of hard flesh and soft hair was one of the all time great combinations. The sum greater than the parts, up there with classic pleasure giving teams like cake and ice cream or gin and dry vermouth. <laughs> I heard Dylan coming up the stairs and pulled my hand away from Dylan. I heard Roy coming up the stairs and pulled my hand away from Dylan's chest with a guilty stare. Dylan calmly rolled under his back seconds before Roy appeared around the corner of the alcove bed carrying a towel. Dylan and I looked as if we'd been waiting patiently for him, although I hoped Roy wouldn't notice that my dick was stiffer than when he departed. <laughs> All right, that's it. <laughs>